So in this short tutorial, we're going to start with a simple two joint chain and a simple muscle with dynamics on it. And we're going to change this rigging in a very quick and simple way to simulate uh, excessive or a larger mass being uh, moved by this muscle. And the way we're going to do that is actually cause the muscle to contract or expand just a few frames before the actual limb starts to rotate. So that way it will simulate the muscle needing to generate a certain amount of force to move a very heavy mass. That can either be an arm lifting something that's very heavy or a very large animal for instance, a rhinoceros or an elephant with very heavy limbs and then the, the energy that needs to be generated by the muscles to actually move the, their limbs. So let's uh, play through the timeline so we can see what we have here. It's very simple. You know, two joint chain with a very simple muscle with some dynamics on it. So to change this, let's open up our hypergraph. We can see that we have two leg joints which have rotation values in the Y channel. And then two group nodes which control the position of the top and bottom of this simple muscle rig. The first thing we're going to do is create an attribute on the first leg joint that will allow us to uh, control the number of frames that the muscle will pre-trigger or how many frames ahead of the rotation of the arm that it will actually start compressing or expanding. So we'll select the top joint then select channels, add attribute, and give our attribute a name. Here we'll call it pre-trigger, capital T. We'll change it to an integer value since we're going to be uh, using it to specify a number of frames. We're going to set the minimum value to 0, the maximum value to 10, and the default will just split the difference and make that 5. Hit OK. We have our new attribute on the first leg joint, which is pre-trigger, and it's set to the default to 5. So now what we're going to do is select the leg joint, which represents the knee, and duplicate it once. So edit, duplicate, let's frame that. We only need this first joint here so we can select all the other nodes and delete them. Let's quickly rename this to knee JNT. Select that knee joint once again and duplicate it. Rename this to knee offset underscore JNT. So we're going to make the knee joint a child of the knee offset so parent that, and then we're going to make the knee offset a child of leg 02FK. I'm going to select the two knee joints and display their local rotation axes. Display component display local rotation axis. Show our handles. So now when we scrub through the timeline we can see our knee offset and knee joint being children of leg 02 inherit the rotations from that joint. So that's expected. So now let's uh, start this rigging. We're going to take the muscle bottom node and make that a child of the knee joint. It still behaves as expected since this is a child of the leg. So now we're going to select our knee joint and create an expression for it. So We'll click, left mouse click on the rotate Y channel and then right mouse hold down and release on expressions and this opens up the expression editor. The first thing we're going to do is name our expression. We'll call this knee offset underscore exp. I like putting the suffix so that we know immediately when we see it that it's an expression. And the first thing we're going to do is create an integer attribute that will read the value of the pre-trigger attribute on the leg 01 joint. So we'll start by specifying the type of variable. It's an integer type variable. Give it a dollar sign so that we can uh, give this uh, variable a name. Call it pre-trigger. We'll make this integer variable equal to leg01 underscore fk dot pre-trigger, which is the attribute that we have on that joint. So what this will do is it will read the value on every frame of this pre-trigger attribute and feed that into this integer variable. 
So the next step, we need to um, find the rotate value of our leg 0, 2 on the rotate Y channel. We need to look a couple of heads of frames in advance and then apply that to our knee joint. So we're going to specify the knee J and T dot rotate Y, which is the channel that we're uh, going to be driving. Now let's type this in and then I'll explain what this expression is doing in a moment. Okay. So we're defining what the rotate Y of our knee joint is. What we're saying is that we're going to get the attribute, that attribute being the rotate Y of the leg 0, 2 FK joint, we're going to get that attribute, the minus T argument, which is at a specific time, and that time will be the frame, the current frame, plus the integer pre-trigger value. So for instance, right now our pre-trigger will be set at the default, which is 5, so if we're at frame 10, for instance, we will look ahead five frames, the current frame plus five, and get the rotate y value of what the leg zero two joint will be five frames in advance. So we're actually looking ahead in time and applying that rotation to the knee joint. Hit create. You can see our rotate y is now being driven. So if we scroll through our timeline, we can see on frame 10, five frames ahead of when the uh, leg zero two joint starts to rotate our knee joint starts to rotate, and we can see this by the local rotation axis. But we've introduced a problem of that knee joint overshooting. That's because not only is it getting its own rotation through the expression, but it's also still a child of leg zero two, so it's getting, in essence, almost double the rotation. So that's why we've created this knee offset joint. What we're going to do is, with a multiply divide node, we're going to negate the Y rotations of leg zero 2. Let's open our script editor and create our multiply divide node by typing create node with a capital N. Specify the node type, in this case multiply divide. Minus N is the minus name argument so we can give this multiply divide node a name. We'll call this knee offset underscore MD. MD for multiply divide. Select that, hit enter. You can see we've created a multiply divide node and it's selected. So that node selected will open the attribute editor. We can see that the operation is set to multiply, which is the default and so happens to be the operator that we want. What that will do is it will multiply any values being fed into the input 1 channels and multiply it by whatever we have in the input 2. Let's open up our connection editor window general editors connection editor with our multiply divide node still selected let's load that into the inputs or the right window of our connection editor now let's select our leg 02 FK joint and load that into the outputs of the connection editor scroll down until we find the rotate channels we'll just connect them completely to the input 1 So now we're going to reselect the multiply divide node by clicking on it with the left mouse button in the channel box and loading that into outputs. So right now you can see that all the input 1 channels are connected, their color is changed to yellow because they're getting the rotate values of leg 02 FK. Let's load our multiply divide node into the outputs of the connection editor. Scroll to the top till we find that node in the output channel. Let's expand that. Then let's select our knee offset joint and load that into the inputs of the multiply divide node. Scroll down to the rotate channel and expand it. So we're only concerned with the rotate Y, so we're going to connect output Y of the multiply divide node to rotate Y of the knee offset joint. So now when we rotate, we can see our knee is starting to pre-trigger, the muscle is starting to contract before the leg or arm actually moves. We've actually almost doubled our overshoot problem. 
And once again, our knee joint gets its own rotation value through the expression, but also from being a child of the leg zero two joint. We've also connected the rotations of this leg zero two to the knee offset. So what we need to do now, select our multiply divide node and set our input 2y to negative 1, which in essence completely negates the rotate values of leg 0, 2. So if we scroll through the timeline, you can see our muscle compressing, pre-triggering. We no longer have the offshoot problem. And there you can see it's starting to expand before this limb expands. So fortunately, this attribute is animatable, the pre-trigger attribute. You know, I think five frames is a little too much. So on frame 30, let's set that to three. So from frame zero to 30, it will pre-trigger by three frames. Let's key that. And then at frame 35, just as it starts to expand, let's set that to one. The reason we're setting it to a lower value is on the way up, it needs more energy to overcome gravity. This being a, a heavier limb or an arm lifting something heavy. But on the way down, it can work, work with gravity. So we're going to set our pre-trigger to only one frame in advance. Let's uh, activate our timeline here. And let's uh, play back here. So we can see it starts to pre-trigger. Then expands just one frame early. Here. See the early compression, and a little early on the expansion. Once again, uh, very simple to set up, something that could be easily scripted or built into your rigs in advance. And um, you know, used properly with this type of muscle influence, it's a pretty quick and easy way to simulate mass on a limb when you're using the muscle type influences.